all my life. I've been waiting so long for the live stream to be live at four, but it's four oh five instead of four o'clock to save our lovely live stream. I want to live stream at four. Live stream at four. <laughs> what up, Internet? What's going on? It's Monday. It's Mundanerd. What's up, Mundanerd? How you doing? How you doing, everybody? Uh, hopefully, I've got audio on both earballs today. Is it on both earballs? I'm checking with you guys uh, to see if it's on both earballs. Because last week, on Friday, we only had the left earball. And so I had to change a bunch of settings, which I didn't even know you had to change those settings. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully we're coming in both earballs, and uh, you guys will let me know if. Uh, oops. Speak of the, speaking of sounds, the other computer was trying to make sounds at me, which is not cool. Viddy Brown, how you doing over there? Viddy oh, Brown's over there checking in with y'all. Biddy Brown, Biddy Brown, Biddy Brown, yeah. Well, Biddy Brown is here. She's taking a nap. She's having an emotional Monday, you guys. She's having a case. She's having a case of the Mondays, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, luckily, she's got a little doggy bed over there. Got two dog beds here in my office now, so both dogs can hang out with yours truly here in the office while I'm doing officing type stuff. But let's get on with the show. This guy already coming in five minutes late. We had to wait for the video to render, you guys. We had to wait for the video segment to get fully rendered so that it would be working properly when it came time to watch the video. You know what I'm saying? So we could watch the video. So that's why we're five minutes late, if anybody was wondering, because there's some people going. Maybe there's maybe there's technical difficulties. Uh, not entirely uh, 100% accurate. We're just waiting it was like, tick, 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 tick. We're waiting for that thing to get uh, to get working. So, uh, let's see. Who was first to the chat here on a Monday? Who was prepared? Who was prepared with his notes? Uh, Frank Dominguez. First one to the chat, Frank Dominguez. Somebody's going to try and... Uh, unseat the champion one of these days, but so far, so far, no luck. <laughs> uh, so far, no luck with that. And uh, I'm going to click the thing over here because we definitely have some community community action to get back to um, some people to uh, chat back at. Holla back. Holla, 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 holla. Uh, and uh, let people know. Let's see. Let's see here. Okay. Um, yeah. So we got some people to holler back at. But I got to make sure that, you know, it's up on the screen over there. It's pulled up, right? <laughs> make sure that that's working right. Uh, Frank Dominguez was first to the chat, followed by Mellow Moogle. Terry McDonald, what is up to the interneters out there? Uh, Sarah Konopko, how you doing? Hey, you! Ha <laughs> ha uh, Aquaman is here, the Plywood Pelican. Turbo Fish coming in. Cute Nix is here. Annie Confetti, Daryl Dimer. Uh, let's see. Oh, we're starting to double up there in the chat. I was about to have a drink of coffee, but I got to move the chat down and say hi. Uh, Terry, <laughs> Terry McDonald's having withdrawals. Hey. We'll talk about 
show withdrawals here in uh, in a minute. I definitely want to I, I want to jump on that and talk about that. I want to that's something I want to talk about. Um, the goldfish are giving me looks. <laughs> they know they know that watching this show equals dinner time. Um, right on. I like that. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jim Meeker is here. What's up, man? Good to see you. Jason Gray is here. Classical Aquatics. I wonder what, what exactly makes classical aquatics. I wonder if that's like, you know, you like listen to smooth jazz, smooth jazz and orchestras while you do your aquaticing. Oh, but that's a subscriber. Well, thank you very much for being a subscriber of me and Jimmy and Greg Sage and Flip Aquatics. Those are all great channels, you guys. Those are all great channels. I mean, I guess I accidentally am saying that my channel is great, but those are three good channels to check out. If you've never checked them out, um, you should, for sure. Uh, little Largemouth. Uh, he'll be live as soon as you can say, uh, Pogo... Uh, <laughs> and I messed it up. Pogos Pogostemon Stellata Octopus. Uh, I'm probably saying that wrong, and a bunch of people are going to get mad. They're going to be like, hey, who's this idiot? He doesn't speak Latin. Well, you know, it's been at least... It's been more than 20 years since I took the Latin classes, you guys. And there's nobody around here that speaks Latin that I'm ever talking to. You know what I mean? It's not like some weird philosophers wandering around in my backyard that I gotta talk to. <laughs> oh, this coffee is delicious today, you guys. Um, it's a fantastic cup of coffee. Hold on, what is going on over here? I'm spilling it. I'm, it's so delicious, I'm spilling it. There we go. All right. Uh, Wushu Jimmy Brown is here. What is up? Uh, good to see you. Kyle Paith, how you doing? Phil Emerson showing up. HC Aqua. Uh, glass Boxes, Mr. Joel Gillett himself. How you doing? Good to see you. Chris versus Fish. Uh, TC Guppies. Oh, what happened? My, my scrolling wheel went all crazy. Uh, Kang Lee is here. What's up, Kang Lee? How you doing? Probably working out, getting buff. You know, being super buff. Uh, just Bob just Bob is here. Gabe W is here. Hello, Mary Beth Mabe. Good to see you. Uh, little Newbie69, how you doing? Uh, Vibui. Does Boos go good with Driftwood? Busa Falandra, you mean? Uh, Busa. Uh, well, didn't we didn't we figure out it's Busa? It's Bukafe Landra, I believe is how it's said. It said Bukafe Landra or something along those lines. Uh, yes, boosts go great with driftwood. They do fantastically. Uh, the ones that I had here, I put them on driftwood for a while, um, but I didn't. I didn't personally like the piece that I had made. It didn't like. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't appealing to me visually after a little a short period of time, so I ended up taking the boosts off of it and uh, planting them in the substrate because it just looked better in the 150. Uh, that way uh, but yeah they do go quite well with driftwood um, so yeah definitely re recommend that Ashton Fitzgerald is here Nisi of the North locking it down with the old wrench the old wrench there um, Gary's Aquatics is here let's see oh Gone Mad is here what's going on can't wait for the Biddy Brown Christmas special. I can't wait for the Biddy Brown Christmas special either. It's going to be exciting. I'm going to be excited. And I think uh, I think you all should be excited too for more nonsense. Um, how's the life planning, plan job, jobs, tendering, playing the bills, balance life going? Wait, what is, what? Glass Box is asking, how's the life plan... Jobby jobs, tendering, paying the bills, balance, your life going. Are you... That is the weirdest sentence. Gil, I'm completely confused by your question, but I will answer it if you can word it a little bit better, please. <laughs> I will glad, I'll gladly answer it. Uh, but we'll get to some of that. Um, I think... I think he's asking me... Yeah, I, I'll, I'll answer it. Yes. Uh, Big Pedro is here, SC Aquatics. Annie Confetti saying, I wish I could drink coffee in the evening. I drink coffee from when I get up till I go to bed. Uh, it doesn't wig me out all that much. Uh, the one thing that bothers me with my sleep is if I have sugar before bed. That is what, um, uh, that's what makes me have like weird dreams of bad sleep if I have sugar before bed. That's the one thing that will uh, um, screw it up for me. 
hold on a second here. I gotta reload this thing. It's doing weird stuff. What are you doing? Huh. Well, my playback playback's doing weird, but at least my chat's working. <laughs> So, well, either way, glad to be here and uh, glad to be here on a Monday. Uh, all right. So I think what Gillett is asking, how's the life plan jobs slash jobs slash other jobs slash tendering slash paying the bills slash balance, life balance, all that stuff. Um, so uh, as I mentioned last week. Uh, we were I was we were talking about it a little bit in the fact that uh, I'm gonna have to go bid some jobs, which will be tomorrow. Uh, today, this morning, I spent my time. Uh, there, uh, there were some people looming over me with bright lights, and uh, they are doing this kind of stuff. In at my teeth, uh, I was at the dentist. I was at the dentist getting inspected and cleaned to make sure that my teeth aren't gonna fall out. I didn't get an A plus, but I got a A minus. Maybe I got an A minus. They want me to yank one of my teeth out, and um, it's one of my wisdom teeth back here. And I'm more of the fan of uh, let's just heal this situation. So um, it's one step better than three months ago when I when I got it checked. So whatever I'm doing is working to a certain degree, and uh, so. Not not anything bad with the dentist, but tomorrow I'll be going to uh, uh, bid some jobs and see about what's going on because uh, uh, the work life balance I don't I don't know it's uh, it's kind of getting to one of the it's getting to the point right now where I have to make a real decision about um, uh, uh, the, the bills. You know what I mean? Like the bills are a real thing. Like they just don't go away as much as I. Would like them to go away, you know what I mean? Like I'd like them to just go away, and uh, so I got to make some real decisions. And the, the one of the big problems I think that people were were kind of, I guess, upset about or whatever was that uh, I'm not going to be able to do the show either at the same time or maybe even the same frequency or anything like that um, because I can't necessarily be making video and all that kind of stuff, and uh, along those lines just because like I can't necessarily do it from the field like you know I can't I can't do a show from literally in a field somewhere so uh we'll see what happens if I can schedule that out properly I also have some uh some other jobs that may or may not work out but I have to uh I have to work out some of that scheduling we'll see how that uh how that pans out over the next period um over this next week um in regards to that kind of stuff, because like I said, you know, the bills don't go away and that's just going to be a reality of, of life moving forward. So, um, you know, I, I actually had some, uh, some conversations this weekend that, um, sort of pertain to this situation. It was kind of funny because, um, you know, somebody was asking me like, you know, cause they're really interested in, in doing, um, and possibly doing like their own YouTube channel or doing their own pod podcast or any of that kind of stuff. And, um, so they really wanted some figures of like how much it costs to like do all this stuff. And, uh, so I started kind of breaking it down for them and we got about halfway through and they were just like, no, nah, never mind. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> and, um, I respect that. I right, something going on here. The doctor must have knocked one of my teeth loose on purpose. Uh, but the um, uh, that real conversation, you know, with them kind of actually just brought up a lot of the stuff that was going on with me. So, um, like, I'm obviously not going to stop doing YouTube or anything along those lines, even though um, even though there was. Um, there was a point where I had to stop just because my life got too uh, too hectic and crazy. Basically, like uh, I don't, I'm trying to think of like when that was, but it was uh, it was a few years ago. Basically, when I got sober, I didn't have time to. Um... Where's my little sober counter? Where'd that thing go? It's around here somewhere. 
I'll click on it. I'll click on it on accident. There we go. Uh, it was a while back when I was getting sober and I was just spending so much time at like meetings and going to therapy and all that kind of stuff uh, that I didn't have time to do this and do YouTube and stuff. And the last thing I want to do is go back to that. So, uh, you know, trying to figure out how to put everything together so that it can work uh, is kind of the issue right now. Um, and, you know, I'm going to do my best to like make you know, everything work because that's, you know, that's just where I'm at right now and what I'm going to keep doing. So, uh, I'm just going to keep making the show basically until they turn the lights off. Um, cause that's just how I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> um, it's definitely going to just, uh, just go that route instead of, um, uh, instead of just like, oh, i have going to be gone for a year again. So, uh, but I, you know, I will definitely be making shows for sure. One of the big problems that I'm concerned about is, um, a lot of people have told me they're like, look, man, I, I like the really short YouTube videos and stuff. Um, and I want you to make more of those and I want you to do more of that. Um, and in a real sense of the word, um, like I, I can actually go look at the, oh, hold on, let me pull it up right here. So a lot of people get excited about me doing short videos and that kind of stuff, but I can actually, I can literally look at right now. Um, oh, I have to actually open the other thing, but I can actually tell you right now. Let's see if I make a short video, it only gets a third of the views. Um, and that's just like realistic, like looking at it right there. That's the number. It's a third of the views of, you know, like doing a show. Um, and so even if, even if I like, even if I, this is the format that I like to do. I like to do the short stuff and everything like that. I think it's fun to do like crazy stories and all that kind of stuff, but, uh, and do those kind of shorts or whatever. But even with my channel, it's like, there's not a whole lot of incentive for me to do those. So when I do those, those are actually kind of the fun part, even though that's a lot of work to do all the editing and the shooting and all that kind of stuff. It's a lot of work, but that's the fun part that I do. The, a lot of the, the mainstay of the work that I do is into putting in this show, being engaged, answering, answering like questions like making videos in regards, you know, like I'll do this long format hour show in regards to like some people will ask me a question. Um, and oftentimes it'll be like one person asks me the question and I'll just do a whole hour on it to essentially, um, to essentially like answer this, like one person's question and no one ever really knows who that person was. Cause I don't normally point it out. Um, I just, I'll often just like email them back and go like, Hey, check out Wednesday's show. Um, hopefully it's going to answer the questions for you. It'll be like an hour of what you were asking me about. Um, and so, uh, the mainstay of work is this long show. When I do those short videos that like the response is, you know, it doesn't even get as many views and stuff like that. I, and I think essentially it has to, has to do with, um, essentially it has to do with the fact that they're it's entertaining, but it doesn't really have like knowledge if people are like looking for knowledge or whatever. So, um, I mean, maybe at some point in time, I'll definitely, maybe I'll do another series of like, you know, 10 minute videos or whatever that are, you know, kind of a quick cut explanation of, of some topics and stuff like that. But the show is what I, this, sh this show is what I like to do. Honestly, I like to do the long format stuff. Um, and, um, like Terry's saying, I like long videos. It replaces TV for me. It's like, that's, that's one of the things for, for me too. It's like, I don't really watch TV anymore unless it's like a live event, like a football game or something like that. Um, like I often listen to podcasts and stuff like that because, uh, rarely do I get an opportunity to, for instance, like hear from a, a you know, a doctor in psychology or something that's just going to talk for an hour about something. Um, so I'm not to say that I'm a doctor, but th those are the people that I listen to when I get a chance. So, um, th this is the show that I, I put my energy into like making, trying to make it as good as possible. And, um, you know, so 
this is where my energy is going, but you know, as an example is that if, um, so when you guys remember when I was up in Alaska, I was able to do like two short live streams, right? Um, that's basically what I, what I was able to do from up there. So that gives you an idea of what it's like being in the field and being able to like make videos or whatever. Um, I really can't, I just, you know, we could do some live streams where I walk around and people just like, yeah, cool, grainy video with bad audio that you guys just walked around and like showed stuff that was going on. Um, so that's kind of what ends up happening if I am out in the field is that I don't have a ton of time to, you know, actually produce the stuff. So, um, and we're kind of are at the point now where I'm like, oh crap, I got to I got to pay these bills or there ain't nothing I can do. So, um, the last thing I want to do is, is end up screwing with like Vicky and I's relationship and stuff like that, because I'm like, I'm broke, you know? <laughs> so, um, let's see here. Gary's aquatics, uh, Corvus, I'm new sub for your channel. I'm, uh, I've been super excited for the last two days because my fancy guppies had babies and for the first time they are so cute and small man I can't believe how small yes uh, most of any of the aquatic babies that come out there are unimaginably small um, they uh, it's it's almost surprising especially with a live bearer like guppies I mean they're just these tiny little busters uh, but New baby guppies is fantastic, and I swear it's not like it's not like the only reward in fish keeping or plant keeping or any of shrimp keeping or any of that kind of stuff. But uh, it's it definitely is one of the best rewards when the things that you have are breeding and reproducing and doing well and being happy and stuff like that. So uh, kudos, man. That's that is fantastic, Gary. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, I'm, I'm stoked for you. I'm stoked. He's got babies. Your father. Your fish father. Which is fantastic. That's awesome. Uh, Plywood Pelican says, if they're using screwdrivers, I say get another dentist. Uh, they weren't actually using screwdrivers. It's the only tool I had here. I, I don't have dentist tools on my desk because now that would be weird. Oh, I guess I could have done the pliers, though. Maybe they had pliers there. I don't know. I didn't see pliers there, but more likely there'd be pliers than screwdrivers, right? Um, let's see, Rob Hicks Aquariums, hi Corvus and the Fish Fam, what's up Rob, how you doing? Uh, Rod S, my, uh, Bacopa Colorata, Colorata, has a nice purplish color when the lights first go on, by end of lighting period it has turned green, am I missing some nutrient overnight it turns back purplish color, thoughts, hmm, that's a little bit odd, um, it is odd that it would be changing color like that. Um, yeah, I've never really noticed that before, personally. In in my experience, I've never seen anything with the plants doing anything like that. So, um, I'd be hard-pressed to say. But my guess would be um, maybe either your... Huh. It might have something to do with your lighting, though. Um, if it is redding up and going like a purplish color like that and then turning green over the day, I wonder, um, I would double check like what the spectrum is on your lights that are going in there. I guess that's a little bit odd. I've never really heard that. Uh, but red plants normally turn green when either iron supplement is low or the lighting is either too dim or has moved into a spectrum that no longer uh, is going to allow the the red the red coloring to come out. Uh, so that would be the two culprits I would look into immediately. Uh, typically when plants are doing something goofy like that, it's normally like a lighting situation. Like uh, maybe if you have T5s on there, the, the spectrum will change on a T5. Uh, over time and that's something to definitely pay attention to um, and and look into and see what's going on there uh, they also uh, if you do have t5s t8s anything along those lines uh, they will die down over time too so you'll definitely lose the light intensity that you had especially 
you know, at the beginning of the light, it will, you know, wear down just like a motor or your legs are running around, you know, any of that kind of stuff. Uh, so they end up getting used up and will wear out. One of the one of the big reasons I've been switching to LEDs is that reason right there, um, that they do wear down. And even though they do work, they do have to be replaced fairly often. And uh, I don't want to have to shell out money uh, to go buy light bulbs anymore. It uh, Since there is an out that you don't have to pay for them anymore, <laughs> I'm going for it. Um, so... And uh, I have some more expensive versions. I have some cheaper versions of stuff, uh, some DIY-ish type things where you wire them together. That's not that big of a deal. I did see a DIY video that had like uh, a million views on it the other day, which I thought was absurd because the guy had just bought, you know, light fixtures that you screw LED bulbs into and screwed them in there. And I don't even understand how that was DIY. That's... I mean, how many fish keepers does it take to screw in a light bulb? That's probably a good joke somewhere, right? <laughs> um, let's see here. I have not done a water change on their 10-gallon planted tank in about two months, but there's plenty of places to hide. So you can see how uh, bad their tank is if you look at uh, my please help video. Oh, he's got some, uh, got some good advice here. Let's see about hiding places, good water, food on a consistent frequency and let it roll. Okay. Yeah, the um he's feeding his his guppy babies with crushed with the crushed fish food, which is smart. I normally crush it down into a powder. Uh and sometimes um which is sometimes why I uh I would um what's the word? like mix it with a little bit of tank water and then uh, use like an eyedropper or something along those lines. Uh, if you are having real problems um, feeding your uh, feeding your fry, one of the easiest things that most people have in their in their fridge would be hard boil an egg and then eat the white part, right? And then save a little bit of the yolk and you can break that down into a little bit of aquarium water and make a little... Um, like you don't want it to be like paste, but you want it, you just you want it to be immersed into the water column, and then you can eyedropper that in a little bit at a time. Uh, but just be really careful with the amount of yolk that you're putting in there. It's it, you don't want it to be very much. Um, it will spike your um, it will spike your ammonia if um, if you're not careful. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Um, let me roll through the chat here. Try to catch up with what you guys, Jay Aquatics loves that painting behind me. Well, thank you. I wish somebody would buy it and it's just been here, but I'm thinking I'm going to install it on the wall over there. If nobody buys it anytime soon, um, do, 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 do. Let me read this chat real quick. Uh, I find it, uh, Bentley Pascal says, I find it interesting that the topic plant today is one of my absolute favorite stems on my birthday, octopus is awesome. Oh, it's Bentley Pascal's birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday, Bentley. Happy, 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 happy birthday. Happy, 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 happy birthday, Bentley Pascal. Happy birthday. I don't know how old you are today. How old are you today? Tw 20 thousand years old i'm gonna guess um let's see a little large mouth to me it is the best way to create an aquatic version of a bamboo forest love it uh for all my schoolers yeah i love the octopus um it does grow it grows great we'll definitely get to talking about that and uh run over the plant obviously when we get to the planting video portion um let's see uh oh, I hear the dishes calling me. Catch you, catch you later, uh, Mayor Beth. Uh, I did my dishes b before the stream, so that made it makes it easier. Adam D. Yo, Joel. Does anyone have success with the screw-in type LED daylight bulbs? Uh, I know that a lot of people actually have uh, have success with those uh, uh, the screw-in type LEDs. Those those ones come in in the uh, 
6500k variety i think there are some there might be some even in here uh i definitely use them in my house um and they will work uh for sure on smaller smaller tanks i think the big issue is getting getting the getting through the depth of water for those because they aren't they aren't a real focused led they um they uh they have a cover on them and sometimes you have to take the cover off so that you can get them to be more directional to head down into the water um but that's that's really my thing like like on my 240 uh it was just going to take so many oh no, sorry let me let me go with the 150 because the 150 has a flu ball uh plant and pl fresh plant plus 2.0 whatever yeah the flu ball led um Fresh and Plant 2.0 or something like that. I don't, I don't know. It's a really long name. They should just call it Steve or something, and then we'd all know what they're talking about. Um, but uh, we have that on the 150 now, and the main reason for that is is that um, the amount of space that that tank is is five feet by two feet, and um, just with how many of those bulbs it was really going to take making all the fixtures, making a hood, doing all that kind of stuff was really going to add up to how much it was going to cost um, to just get one of those fixtures, put it on there and be done with it, you know? Um, so that was kind of uh, my my big reasoning behind that. But if I had something like a, like a 20 gallon or a 40 breeder or something like that, uh, that is a direction I would definitely go because you're probably only going to need a couple of them over that. Um, you know, I mean, probably two or maybe three over a, well, probably three over a 20 long. So if you start to add up how much that would cost to put together, it's really not too much. Um, because you could probably get, if you have some wiring skill and stuff like that, you could get a switch and a box and the wire and the, um, um, the actual light bulb, the receiver for the light bulb, whatever that's called. Um, you can get those... I think probably you could probably get that for like 20 or 25 bucks. Uh, like somebody like me, I have connectors and wire and switches for days and stuff like that. So um, on, like on hand here in my shop. So I could uh, I could just put that together with parts that I had here. And uh, so on a, on a smaller aquarium, it is awesome. On like my 150 or my 240, it's really just keeps adding up the more and more and more and more and more and more and more that needs to be added to them. So uh, it was actually going to just cost and the time, the timeline too, the time that would go into it, uh, it was actually just going to cost more to do it that way than it would to essentially just um, get... Uh, get the fixture, put it on there, and it has a dimmer on it too, so uh, that's pretty cool. Now the only thing uh, the only thing that I was hoping for out of that was to have a controller, but um, we've definitely found a really cool option uh, instead of buying the controller, and that would be the, um, the Wi-Fi controlled uh, out, uh, outlet. They go in your outlet. There's a Wi-Fi controlled outlet that just plugs right into your outlet, so uh, that's probably what I'm going to be putting in the fish room so I can actually just control them from my phone. Uh, I think I even forgot to turn the reef back on from when I was filming earlier today, which is stupid, but maybe I turned it back on. I'm not sure. I just remembered right now that I had to turn it back on, but I don't remember if I did or not. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can definitely check those out and, uh, uh, that, that's, that's definitely something I would check out for sure. Uh, let's see in the chat. I'm falling way behind, way behind on the chat. Uh, a lot of people saying that's a sweet painting in the background. Thank you very much. I made that with my hands, which is cool, right? Um, thanks Joel. Just got a 20 gallon and 40 gallon breeders here. That's a big help. I've got two on my 20 long now. Oh, and I think that's a socket. Yes, it's a socket. I don't know why I was calling it a receiver. <laughs> Smooth. Sometimes uh, sometimes I get on here and I'm trying to read and control everything all at the same time, and I just can't find the word. And, you know, I'm not the brightest bulb in the socket, right? Ah. Uh... 
All right, so let's see here. Let's check out this little chat action. Clip shop light LED bulbs, great to consider on a bullet on a budget. Yep, steel nebula, that is a great uh, option. So, uh, like what I have some fixtures. Uh, I have some fixtures in the uh, shop right now that are actually just stored. Um, and nowadays you can actually get an LED bulb that goes into those big, long fixtures, um, and replace that kind of stuff. So that is something that I'm probably going to do with those as part of the lighting in the shop. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to messing with some of those again. Uh, I do have a couple in the garage, but, um, I'd like to be able to actually go shop for them and make sure that we get the, um, uh, and make sure that we actually get the, um, the ones that are available right now and definitely put those in the video. Let's see. Donnie Hill says, Joel, you have any experience or thoughts on the Marine, the Marine land model Four sump, uh, picked one up for a decent price. Uh, oh, you've got a six foot, 220 gallon, uh, 220 gallon, uh, all of the Marine Land sumps I have used in the past actually worked pretty darn well. Um, the really old ones were weird. And um, generally had some, some flow issues with just kind of maintaining stuff going the right direction. Um, the Model 4, I think, is the one that has like the two wheels in it, if I remember correctly. Um, I think the model two has none. I can't remember, but one of the things that, um, I would bear in mind is that filter socks, uh, I could never get filter socks to work. Okay. Let me, let me start over. Hold on. Hashtag. Let me start over. Um, I could get filter socks to work. I could never get them clean properly. Um, and uh, so it just ended up becoming a huge waste of money, in my opinion. In my opinion, in my in, uh, in my estimated opinion, um, they started becoming a big, huge waste of money, and I can never really get them back to how good they were when I when I initially, you know, when I got them new. Um, even if I cleaned them out, or washed them in the washer, or soaked them in vinegar, or soaked them in bleach, or soaked them in this, or soaked them in that, or scrubbed them, and then you know. There was just too much uh, going on there with the uh, filter socks, so that was one thing that um, um, that I, I would take into consideration. Uh, if there's a way to get around the filter sock, uh, that's what I would. That's what I would do. Uh, let's see, bare bottom aquariums leaking, lurking while setting up a permanent home for my rainbows. Oh, right on. Nice. That's always good. Oh, the turtle girl is here. Perfect. Um, let's see. Eric Gone Mad is pointing out you should see the sweet painting in my front room. That's right. I hope I hope they like it. I hope they think it's dope. Uh, Mary Shrek says it's a sweet painting in the background. Oh, right on. A lot of people like that one, apparently. Somebody should have bought that thing, but they never did. It's just here at my house. <laughs> But we are, uh, let's see, what time is it here? We've got to check the time. Um, okay. Corvus, hey, buddy, i got to go, uh, but I will finish this video later. For the Thanks for the advice. Good night, fish fam, and thank you guys for the feedback. Hope you all have a great night. Don't change, Corvus. You're great. Thank you. I'll try not to change unless it's in the, the upward and better direction, if you know what I'm saying. Um that's what I'm going to keep doing. I'm going to keep trying to just get better. Uh, I'm in a competition. I'm in a competition not with other people. I'm in a competition with myself. Uh, as a tie-in to what the conversation from earlier this weekend that I was having uh, in regards to like the – somebody was asking me how much it is to put all this stuff together to be able to do a show and this and that. Uh, and they kind of just dropped out of it like, no, no, never mind. I'm not going to do that. Uh, but – the thing that I would always say to people is that uh, there's no obstruction to um, making anything that you want to make. Uh, and it is never a short trip in order to make anything that is, uh, that is difficult. It always, you always start out just sucking at whatever it is. You're the worst when you start out. Well, maybe not the worst, but you get what I'm saying. You're the worst when you start out. 
and little bit by little bit by little bit by little bit uh you get better and better and better and eventually there is a point in time where you're like oh hey i'm wicked good at this right and uh that just takes time it takes the energy and it takes just doing it uh it's one of those weird things because it's a uh because it's a nike slogan of the like uh just do it you know um that is uh it, it always kind of just has a tendency to get forgotten by people because it's like, oh, just do it. That's like that Nike thing. Um, but th that's the recommendation I always try to give to people. Just start doing whatever it is that you want to do uh, and you'll get better at it. And you're, ne you're never going to be good when you start out. You're only going to be good once you've done it for a good amount of time. You know, that's that's the best advice I can give anybody. And there really is no obstruction in the way of doing whatever except for yourself. Yourself is the only person that's stopping you from doing it for whatever the reason is, whatever the heck is going on. Um, just start doing it. Uh, let's see. Donnie Hill uh, says, I wish you could post pics in chat. Uh, anybody that wants to post pictures or whatnot that, um, you know, that you want me or other people to check out and that kind of stuff. Um, obviously, Facebook is a thing or whatever, but uh, we have a much... We have a much more refined community on the Patreon page, which is www.patreon.com uh, forward slash Joel underscore C. So it's actually pretty easy to get to Joel underscore C if you go to Patreon, right? Um, on the Patreon, we have a community posts, all that kind of stuff on there that you could post pictures. Um, you can ask questions of uh, how many patronizers do we have now? We had some drop out. We had a bunch of people like kind of peace out uh 135 we have 135 people over on the patreon right now that um uh are kicking in they're a part of the little community um but check out the patreon because that's that's kind of where our little community is uh if you're looking for it if you're like hey where's the thing on facebook there is a facebook group um but it's more focused for sure on the patreon so if you have um you know aquarium questions if you're like what is this weird thing in my aquarium you can post a picture up on there you can do all that kind of stuff um and um so hopefully you guys get an opportunity to go check that out and um <clears throat> and uh, and a few things so um let's head over to uh, having said that there's one thing I want to mention here real quick. Where did I get this Pogostamon Stellatus Octopus? I got it from the AquariumCoop.com, but I was there in person. The AquariumCoop.com is where these plants came from. I literally was there. I got them from there. I literally got them from the Aquarium Co-op. Uh, so if you're looking for this exact plant, check out the AquariumCoop.com because that's where I got this from. Uh, so if this is the one you're looking for, go to aquariumcoop.com. Corey is the homie that runs that and a uh, very reputable dude. And I wouldn't uh, be getting stuff from him if that weren't the case. So I got these plants from him. It's only one pot, but that's all I need. That's all I need to, uh, you know, do good stuff. All right. So we'll go to the video here, and I'll keep answering a couple of questions. What the? Come on, video. What are you doing? Start at the beginning. We waited for you to render. Why don't you start at the beginning, video? All right. There we go. Video time. Uh, the turtle girl was saying, uh, if you're one of his patrons, you can post pictures in his community tab. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have a community tab on there. The Patreon... It, I don't really make the rules about whether or not you can post in the Patreon, but you do. They, they there isn't a way for it to be, f to to be free. Uh, but there is a free way to get a hold of me if you are, let's say you're like 15 and you have a question and you're like, look, I can't patronize. Uh, you can head over to darkstararts.com, which is my website. My email is on there. You can email me and ask questions and stuff like that, which a lot of people do, and that is free. Well, it's basically as free as it can get. 
Um, whew, there we go. That coffee is delicious today. I'm telling you, I cooked it. I cooked it just long enough. All right. So we do have uh, we have a little pot here. Like I said, I got it from the Aquarium Co-op. Uh, if you haven't checked them out, check them out. But that's literally where I got this from. So uh, oftentimes people ask me where I get stuff. Sometimes I get stuff where you can't order it online. But that's one of the cool things about the coop. The, uh, sorry, the coop. The Aquarium Coop. Uh, the Aquarium Co-op is that uh, you can order it. And they'll stick it in a box and mail it out to you. Uh, I did see a comment that somebody was like, um, they were stoked because they got eight stems of it in uh, in their little pot. Well, I got 12. I got 12 steps. Stems. I got 12 stems from there. So uh, out of this one pot, which I think is just kind of a lottery situation, right? Like maybe you get eight, maybe you get 12. I don't know how many are supposed to be in there, but mine happened to be 12, uh, which is fine because um, that meant it was really easy to go. I'm going to put six over here and six over there. So uh, I'm actually uh, divvying this up between the 240 and the 180 or sorry, the 150. And the main reason for that is, is uh, I, do, I just do dig this plant, but I also want to come from the same pot and to go into these two different tanks. So it'll definitely give me an idea of a timeline and how long and how quickly each one will take off, right? Because we could, we could always sit around and talk about water parameters and light parameters and what kind of substrate and what kind of this and what kind of that and what da 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 da, da right? Uh, but... I do know I have the same CO2 mix, I have the same water source, and I do have the same lights and that kind of stuff over both of these tanks. The temperature is a little bit different, not very much, just a couple of degrees. But the substrate is going to be the big difference here, uh, along with a little bit of the pH. The pH is a little bit different, uh, the water hardness is a little bit different and that kind of stuff. So. Um, that is going to be the uh, the big difference, but I also wanted to plant them at the same time and see which one generally does better, or if they just do exactly the same. Because um, mainly, most more often than not, a lot of the stuff that I do, I try to turn into turn it into a little bit of a um, uh, a little bit of an experiment. Obviously, this isn't um, you know I don't have a hundred tanks all with like wildly different. Um, all with like wildly different uh, parameters or anything like that. Uh, but it does definitely give uh, a, a certainly an opportunity to at least just go, hey, that one over there, that one over there. And I can just go, oh, cool. It did a lot better in there. Candy Overhauls is here. And I'd like to give a big shout out to Caleb Overhauls. I hope that's his last name. I don't know if that's your actual last name. <laughs> But I'm going to call him Caleb Overholz because it's, it's a lot better that way. Um, Caleb out there in Montana. Caleb, I'm speaking to you via the internet. Hope you're having a good day today. It's Monday and I know that you're, you know, hanging out in the joint. You know, doing your time in the old crossbar motel. But Caleb, we're thinking about you and we hope everything's going pretty well out there. <laughs> uh, I hope everybody turned their speakers up for that one. Uh, I'll try not to spoil it for you in the future. Oh, Mr. Chips is here. I guess the dogs are switching because Biddy Brown left and now Mr. Chips is here. Stop licking your foot. Hey, not cool. Stop that. Yeah. All right. Mr. Mr. Chips is over there licking his foot like a weirdo. He's got like a, he's got that dew claw that kind of bugs him. So he licks at it all the time. I always have to tell him no. Um, um, oh man, we're getting updates over here. Oh, Donnie Hill is a brand new patronizer. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you, Donnie. Donnie Hill, the new Patreonizer. Uh, he's sending in some... Oh, cool. Posting some pictures up on there and stuff. All right. Well, hopefully we'll get to those later this week. Uh, <coughs> hopefully we'll get to some of that later this week and we'll check them out. See what happened there. 
Um, yeah, Tesla stuff saying dogs be like shift change. That's right. <laughs> dogs are swapping out on the old shift changes stuff. Um, the, uh, but yeah, this, uh, the Pogostaman Stellalis Octopus. It's, uh, I wouldn't say that it's necessarily my favorite plant. Uh, I think out of my stem plants, uh, stem plants of all time, I think, um, Let's see, sort of like the needle leaf. Um, what am I thinking of? Hygro here. Uh, I can't think of the variant on it. Hygrophilia. Hygro. It's not Corambosa. No, that's not the one I'm looking for. Uh, what am I thinking of? What am I thinking of? I think it's, nope, hold on a second, I'm going to figure this out real quick, yep, there it is, Hygrophilia salicifolia, 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 <laughs> Hygrophilia is one of my favorite stem plants, mainly because you can grow it into a crazy big fat stock, and then poof, you just bust out from one big stock and uh the trick with that is is that you just keep trimming it down you just keep trimming it down trimming it down trimming it down trimming it down and eventually you can get the stock like about yay big and it turns into like a crazy underwater tree so uh hygrophilia would probably be my favorite uh stem plant of all time there's so many variances of it like the pinna pinatafida 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 pinatafuda pinatahudi what it um, would there's so many variations on the high grow and stuff like that that it would be pretty difficult to like peg down exactly which one I like. But uh, as far as stem plants, that that's probably my all time favorite. Some of my favorite big scapes were done with that because uh, also it gets like super tall, super long, stuff like that. Um, Coombs Aquatics uh, just got Styrogene repent Styrogene repens a couple of weeks ago and just watched your video on it yesterday. It's planted in fluorite with root tabs. I dose with flourish twice a week and it's under medium light. What do you think? Do you think it'll grow? Coombs Aquatics, yes, I think it will grow. Uh, sounds pretty much like you got it pretty much handled. That's what you're looking for. Uh, Gone Mad is having a turbo family withdrawal, so you guys should get together. You guys are both so close. You guys can just drive over there. Uh, do you have any other... Do, 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 do. Bracken's asking, oh, do I have any other stem plants uh, in either of those tanks? Um, currently, right now, I don't... Not really. No, I don't, I don't think not really. <clears throat> not really that, that many stem plants. Uh, hence the reason why I'm adding some in now. Uh, I typically don't add stem plants in Escape uh, that I've had for a good amount of time, which is established and stuff like that, until later on, which is why uh, I'm starting to add them in now. The reason for that is um, the stem plants, like if I if I put those in first, uh, they, t they have a real opportunity to take over a big area and then end up changing the, the layout of the scape, you know, if I put a lot in there and they start propagating and going out all over the place, then, uh, then it'll end up definitely changing the scape. Um, and, uh, and what I was trying to do with the overall look and everything like that. And, uh, so that's one of the reasons that I generally wait to do the stems until later, uh, instead of doing them super early in the aquarium. <laughs> Dang tanks, my ears are dead. <laughs> Um, I hope, uh, well, we hope Caleb is, is doing great. Um, to extra shout out to Caleb, man. I hope you're doing, hope you're doing good out there. Uh, the video right now where you're putting the plant in with the bright red shrimp in the shot. Incredible. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, definitely having a good time. I'm definitely having a good time with uh with these two main tanks i have right now uh hopefully you guys are excited about the next tank that is going in which is that cube tank from uh that started going in from last week i'm going to finish some of the stand work on that uh most likely actually i'm probably going to finish that hmm what's that hold on let me check here i have my little faux schedule here uh ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, I'll probably finish the stand work and stuff tomorrow, and we'll probably do reef stuff 
brief stuff on Wednesday is my tentative schedule right now. So uh, unless somebody's freaking out and wants me to do something else, then uh, that's going to be the schedule today. Uh, but the Pogostamon is actually a pretty easy, uh, fast-growing plant, pretty easy to trim and uh, and easy to plant. You know, you're basically going to take your tongs, uh, grip it from the grip it on the base, and jam it into the substrate. Ain't a whole lot more uh, to do than that. Uh, you, oftentimes with this one, though, you want to go a little bit deeper than you were thinking. So try to get it at least, uh, if, if it's been in those pots for a long time, try to get it at least a couple inches deep. And that will definitely help the root structure and all that stuff adapt from to, to, the, new, uh, to the new environment that it is in. Oh, Barbara Jackson's making it in for the last minute. Well, hey, Barbara. 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 <laughs> um but uh this is um I, I wouldn't hmm but as you guys uh so let me get back to i guess talking about this plant because i'm accidentally trying to respond to the chat which isn't the best thing to do right now so let's uh talk about this plant it's always getting moved to the back uh or it's not getting moved to the back i'm actually planting it in the back of the aquarium and one of the big reasons for that is it's going to grow up nice and tall um, and you want the tall plants to be in the back. You want the small plants to be in the front, and you want the medium plants to be in the middle, right? That would be the easiest way. People people can pretty consistently ask me um, what is the best... Um, what is the the best way to start figuring out how the, how they're going to put together their aquascape and all those kinds of things? Tall stem plants like this always put them in the back. They just look like garbage if you put them into the front of the tank. Uh, it's not that the the plant is any uglier or anything. It's just when you walk up to it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, and so. A really easy way to equate that would be, for instance, if you were to go to like a fish store that has a bunch of floating plants in it. Uh, I know the the long standing uh, uh, store that I used to go to for years and years and years uh, that is no longer around. It uh, doesn't exist anymore, so don't worry about uh, trying to go there. But they had all their plants in this really tall. They had like a 36 inch tall tank so all of these tall stem plants that they would get they would generally get them from other aquarists and stuff like that so local people uh, would grow them up super tall and they'd bring these big old clippings in and those guys would resell them right so they'd hold on to them and resell them uh, and that aquarium would always have like these giant tall plants in it right up in the front and so there's Oftentimes, if I go to like a PetSmart or a Petco or, or or something along those lines, they they normally have their plant holding tanks set up like that. And you just kind of go, why does this tank look terrible? It's like, oh, because all the tall plants are in the front. And it's a total nightmare. <laughs> like, all right. So that, that would be the best advice that I can give to, um, uh, the best advice that I could give to just about everybody. Um. Uh, to just about everybody out there, right? Is that uh, to, just to make sure to, to move the big tall plants in the back, medium plants in the middle, and small plants in the front. Uh, if you're trying to do, for instance, like a Dutch style tank, if anybody is not familiar with that, hopefully you can um, actually just Google search some image on Dutch, Dutch style aquascape. Uh, and you get a lot of images of that, which is large grouping of or uh, grouping of plants that are all large and tall. And that's more of an advanced kind of thing. So if you are somebody that's starting out, um, if you stick to that small plants in the front, medium plants in the middle, and tall plants in the back, you're gonna you're gonna most likely come out with something that actually looks really really fantastic. And um, if you're trying to do something like a Dutch scape right off the bat, you're probably gonna run into too many problems, and it's not necessarily gonna be worthwhile. Uh, Bracken is asking, uh, Boos, Anubius, and Crips are the majority right? Um, I have so... Uh, I don't have a ton of plants to this point where I'm so confused, but yes, those are a bunch of them. Um, some that are missing would be, uh, from, from that list, would be Java Ferns, uh, Chain Swords. Um, Let's think. Uh, let me think here for a second. I have a lot of guppy grass. I have a lot of lily plants. Um, I have a lot of mosses. I have a lot of physidens. I have a lot of. Um, so, 
let me think. What else am I missing? But I have a bunch of other plants too, and I'm sure it will just the list is just gonna keep getting longer and longer. I'm at the point now where I'm starting to collect some of the some of these stem plants that are actually going to be going in here. Um, and yet another reason for that, like I said earlier, was uh, if you really start out with stem plants and not do the smaller plants in the front and the middle and things, um, <coughs> the stem plants will generally have um, a real ability to take over the whole entire tank and the whole entire look of the tank and stuff like that because um, they, gr they do grow pretty quickly. So... <clears throat> what I like to do is get those slower growers, the ones that need to fill in and all that kind of stuff right in the beginning so that they have time to kind of grow in, establish, and I'm going to figure out how well they're going to grow and, that, and those kinds of things. Uh, and then I can start adding in the stem plants to the areas that I want them to go. Uh, I am looking for some Ludwigia, which will be probably going in fairly soon. Um, that's that's one that I am looking for that I need to fill in some spots with. And uh, like I said, some hygrophilia, probably some pinatifida, pinatifida, however you want to say it. <coughs> oh, I'm like coughing today. What's going on here? Oh, I was out in the shop working all day, breathing sawdust and whatnot. I was uh, doing some woodworking out there with my new saw. Did anybody see the new saw video? Uh, the, new, the new unboxing video I made? I made a new unboxing video. Um, the internet, uh, the YouTube says that nobody really watched it. <laughs> Damn it. I thought that one, I thought that one maybe, you know, would, would get picked up by somebody, but it didn't. <laughs> but, uh, if you haven't seen it, you should definitely watch it like a hundred times at least. Just make like a hundred accounts and watch it over and over again. A lot of dislikes on it, so people I think were mad. <laughs> but I thought it was fun. Ella Gregory says, My husband got me a plant from our local fish store, and I don't know what it is. It looks like it's narrow leaf temple, uh, but I ha but it had a tiny but it had tiny purple flowers on it. Um, I can't remember if temple has purple flowers or, or white flowers. But it definitely could be a temple plant or something like that. Ella, um, like I said, you could either go to the Patreon, uh, which is um, www.patreon.com forward slash Joel underscore C. Or you could go to darkstararts.com and email like a picture of it to me. And, uh, and I could check it out and I could see what's up. Uh, or you could go to the Patreon and post uh, on the public, on the community on the community thing there post it up as donny hill is doing right now i'm definitely going to be checking those out sounds like it's pictures of his sumps and the 135 and stuff which is dope i'm going to check those out i'm looking forward to that uh but we are coming up on the end of the show i'm are we running long today what's going on we're running long today either way i started late so i might as well run late right uh we had a bunch of people leave so i guess i don't know i guess we'll start wrapping it up i don't know um <laughs> uh, frank dominguez says yeah the trolls hate it <laughs> yep they do <laughs> um uh, edgar Allan poe's saw that's right yeah it was kind of edgar Allan poe-ish saw uh bracken says very interesting vocals that's right <laughs> tesla was laughing uh barbara saw it and was scary saw um, yeah. <laughs> uh barbara jackson saying i gotta hack back the wisteria weekly but it does soak up the nitrates fast that it certainly does uh if you are somebody that has an issue with uh nitrates and ex excess ammonias and stuff like that uh these fast growing stem plants would be the best addition to your aquarium um i do recently some people are asking me about uh they have some heavy nitrate water uh coming out of their tap i'm not 100 percent sure about you know what watershed that was or anything along those lines I, I can't remember can't recall um but if if you are one of those people that does have a lot of nitrate coming out of your tap a planted aquarium is going to be the best direction to, to go and, and doing definitely like a lot of stem plants and stuff like this that are going to chew up uh, that excess stuff. So when you do 
doo doo. When you do do your water changes, uh, you'll actually um, not, or you'll actually be um, eliminating a lot of that negative stuff that you don't want, and end up with a positive of more plants growing faster and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Rod S is asking, CO2 is in air at 400 parts per million. If I run an airline under a water pump to chop bubbles up into fine mist, do you feel this would dissolve enough uh, additional CO2 into the water? Could not find out in any info on the web. Um, I forget what the exact breakdown is. Um... Let's see. Do, 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 do. I'm trying to remember because I think nitrogen is like 70% of the air. Air, what is, what's the word I'm looking for here? <clears throat> um, oh, that's going to take a long time to read. Uh, let me see. Uh, I know what to do. I know what to do. Ah, oh, there it is. Ha 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 Let's see. By volume, dry air contains 78.09% nitrogen, 20 0.95% oxygen, 0.93% argon, and 0.04% carbon dioxide. So as you, as you remember, 400 parts per million is 0.04%. And Bracken has posted them in the chat right there. Perfect. Thank you, Bracken. That is, uh, it's got it going better than, it's going faster than, than yours truly, which... Is good we like that we like having people around here that are quicker than me because that's good uh, so as a quick explanation no the co2 from there is not going to do anything um, to add a co2 to your water column maybe technically you'd get a extra molecule or something like that and um you might get a little bit extra. You might get something along those lines, but it's not going to do anything that's going to affect anything in the water. Um, obviously, nitrogen being almost 80% of the uh, eighty percent of the air, uh, technically you'd be immersing nitrogen in there, but it would just be moving and passing through. Not a big deal. 21% uh, oxygen. 21% <clears throat> of, the, of the water or the air is going to be oxygen, you actually be putting more argon technically into the water. But um, what water is going to pick up because it's H2O, uh, it's looking for hydrogen, it's looking for oxygen, and it's looking to uh, essentially react with those elements and stuff. So the carbon dioxide that you have from just our air around us is so low, uh, it really wouldn't do anything. It wouldn't do anything you know, like beneficial for your plants, if that's what you're looking for. Uh, it would do benefit, um, and I'm trying to think of the math here. So it's 21 over point, what is it? So it's 21 over point oh 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 four, right? But we need the percentage. Oh, I got the wrong thing in there. What the? Oh, come on now. What are you doing? Keep hitting the wrong thing. Um, so, what's the breakdown there? It's point. So, it's less than a half of 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 a percent or something crazy like that. I, I don't even know what the the stupid computer won't do it right now. I, I have to get the calculator out and I can't get that out right now. But um, <clears throat> um, so the big the big issue is that the the oxygen that would be going in is going to so far outweigh the 
uh, carbon dioxide that you'd be trying to inject from that bubbler and stuff like that, you'd basically just be oxygenating the water. So is that useful? Yes, it's very useful to run a bubbler and mix air with your water to oxygenate the water for many, many, many reasons. Uh, we won't go into those now because we're almost at the end of the show. But uh, just the basic breakdown there is that uh, it's the you're not going to get the carbon dioxide that you're looking for. So um Uh, so yeah, you'd get more CO2 just from having fish in there <laughs> from breathing pretty much. Um, but yeah, you're not going to be injecting CO2 that way. So, all right, guys, we're getting up to the end of the show. Uh, I wanted to answer more questions. Vicky Toria is in the chat. Everyone's saying hi, uh, to Vicky Toria, which is great. Um, Good to see everybody. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming out this Monday. I know that uh, I was a little weird today and kind of spastic on my uh, rambling My rambling thought process today is a little bit weird. It's probably because I went to the dentist and they stuck their hands in my mouth and stuff. It's probably got something to do with it, I guess. Or it's just Monday, right? Um, but great to be here. Thank you everybody for coming out. Thank you everybody for hitting the like button and the subscribe button and all that kind of stuff. Um, thanks for watching, being a fan. Thanks to all the patronizers. Uh, we're going to keep rocking and rolling. Uh, if you guys are looking for the real fish talk tomorrow, typically tomorrow, the real fish talk goes out at 10 a.m. Now, I have a concern. I have a concern because Corey has been on vacation in Hawaii, so uh, I don't think we're going to be doing a real fish talk tomorrow. Uh, and because he's going to get back and they are going to be fixing his internet tomorrow. So we're not going to be doing a real fish talk tomorrow. I'm going to bug him tonight and see if we are going to make up for it or not. Um, but if, let me put it this way. So if I get, let's see, if we get 10 comments on this video from people that want the European early stream tomorrow, I'll do an early stream at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time uh, to basically supplement the void of the real fish talk this week because vacations happen and that's just how they go. Um, but if I get 10 comments from 10 different people on this video right now or before tomorrow morning or whatever that they want you guys want the 10 a.m show i'll do it um 10 different people 10 a.m tuesday talk show <laughs> I try to do everything that starts with t right um, but you don't have to be European or whatever. That's just normally the early show is directed so that the, the European people can watch it live. Um, European people can always watch it later, but it's very difficult. It's very difficult for a lot of them because we air at like midnight, one in the morning from our time here. That's the, their time there. Wait, where's East? I don't know. I don't know where East is. It's that way. Um, so... I'll leave it up to you guys. If you guys want to comment, post a comment on there, share the video out, all that kind of stuff. See if we can't uh, inspire some people for a 10 a.m. start time tomorrow. Then uh, I'll be I'll be all for it. All right, everybody have a fantastic Monday out there. Get uh, get ready for all of your 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 uh, fancy whatevers because it's Monday. Take a nap. Uh, don't worry about Monday Night Football tonight because uh, it's two teams that just, whatever, who cares? Uh, it's like Pittsburgh and Baltimore or something. I don't know. It don't matter. Take a nap, watch a movie. Maybe go see that uh, Maybe go see that Justice League movie. I didn't think it was too bad. There was some badness to it, but I don't think it was terrible. I'm, I wasn't going in there thinking I was going to learn a life lesson or anything like that. All right. Everybody have a fantastic Monday, and I'll talk to you all.